Today we will learn and reflect on the work in the Philokalia by Evagrius the Solitary, who was the spiritual father of St. John Cassian, and he was known as the Young Cappadocian Father, since he was ordained by St. Basil and was made a deacon by St. Gregory of Nanzianzus. At the end of our talk, we'll discuss the sources we use for this video. Feel free to follow along in the PowerPoint presentation we uploaded to SlideShare. Please, we welcome interesting questions in the comments. Let us learn and reflect together. The Eastern Church Fathers value tradition over novelty, and many of the works of the Philokalia borrow from the early works of Evagrius the Solitary. These Church Fathers saw this borrowing as reverence for the writings of Evagrius and tradition. These Church Fathers never thought of this copying as plagiarism. In our first video, we reflected on the influence of Evagrius on the Eastern Church Fathers and the Philokalia, and his work on asceticism and stillness, and why Evagrius, since he was influenced by Origen, is not considered a saint. And Evagrius' extracts from the text on watchfulness are only a page, and they're another good summary of how to live a godly life as self-discipline, so we will quote them in full. Evagrius teaches us, A monk should always act as if he was going to die tomorrow, yet he should treat his body as if he was going to live for many years. The first cuts off the inclination to listlessness and makes the monk more diligent. The second keeps his body sound and his self-control well balanced. And laziness is the opposite of diligence, but listlessness is not the same as laziness. Listlessness happens when you tire of diligence and become discouraged when seeking your spiritual goal. Listlessness is like the young wife who gives up on her marriage and tunes out her husband. Theirs will be a marriage of misery if not divorce. But if we realize that we may die tomorrow, then we will be quicker to forgive, and we will be quicker to love, and we will be more likely to be diligent for yet another day. And we always find an excuse to throw in a pitch for the divorce care ministry, which is non-denominational. And Evagrius teaches us, he who attains spiritual knowledge and has enjoyed the delight that comes from it will no longer succumb to the demon of self-esteem, even when he offers him all the delights of the world. For what could the demon promise him that is greater than spiritual contemplation? And we should pray for all of our priests and pastors. For every Sunday they lead the service. They preach to all of us how we should live our lives and how easy it is for them to succumb to the demon of self-esteem. Which is why we're showing the icon here of the ladder for divine ascent. If you look at the icon, the demons are pulling both ordinary believers and priests off the ladder of divine ascent to Jesus. So how easy it is for any of us who are in positions of authority, whether we're generals in charge of tens of thousands of troops, or managers in charge of many offices, or even grade school teachers in charge of a class of five-year-olds, or fathers and mothers. But if we pray and read spiritual writings, so our knowledge changes both our thoughts and our hearts, warming and delighting our soul, Perhaps then we can guard against the demon of self-esteem. And Evagrius continues, We should examine the ways of the monks who have preceded us and achieve our purpose by following their example. One of their many counsels is that a frugal and balanced diet, accompanied by the presence of love, quickly brings a monk into the harbor of dispassion. Once I visited St. Macarios at noon, and burning with intense thirst, I asked for a drink of water. But he said, be satisfied with the shade, for at this moment there are many travelers who like even that. Whatever our struggles, whatever our sufferings, there are those who struggle more, who suffer more. We can pray for deliverance from our sufferings, but we can first pray for the patience and endurance to bear our sufferings, and to pray our sufferings will make us stronger and more compassionate, that our sufferings will not make us bitter. And Evagrius continues, Then I was telling him of my difficulties in practicing self-restraint, and he said, Take heart, my son, for during the whole of twenty years I myself have never had my fill of bread, water, or sleep, but I have carefully measured my bread and water and snatched some sleep by leaning a little against the wall. Fasting at its simplest to simply not eating or fill, eating simple foods to sustain our health, and not being selfish and not being a pig. And Evagrius continues, spiritual reading, vigils and prayer bring the praying intellect to the stability. Hunger, exertion, and withdrawal from the world with a burning lust. Reciting the Psalms, long suffering and compassion, curb our sense of power when it is unruly. Anything untimely or pushed to excess is short-lived and harmful rather than helpful. And now discussing Evagrios' work, 153 texts on prayer. Interesting on Evagrios, Konstantinovsky observes that Evagrios sees true prayer as something to be experienced. True prayer is something that we must practice. Indeed, true prayer is something we must long to practice, as Evagrios teaches us in his closing sentence. If when praying, no other joy can attract you, then truly you have found prayer. 
If you're a theologian, you will pray truly. And if you pray truly, you're a theologian. And here the footnote tells us that theologian here means someone who has an intense longing for God. And Evagrio seeks imageless prayer, prayer that is possible when the ascetic clears his mind of all persistent, delusional, and obsessive preoccupations and the passions that are tied to these preoccupations. Evagrios compares the persistence of prayer to the seven years of labor by Jacob to gain the hand of Rachel, his gazelle. For Jacob so loved Rachel that the seven years he labored for her hand seemed to him to be but a day. And Evagrios also reminds us of the parable told by Jesus in Luke 18. In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice, so she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice for them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? And St. Paul in Philippians exhorts us to pray without ceasing. Vagrius teaches us that he who loves God is always communion with the Father, repulsing every impassioned thought. Prayer, Vagrius teaches, is the practice of the virtues in the contemplation. Christ did not reject the widow's might, so Christ will not reject your prayer, no matter how simple your sincere prayers may be. Vagrius teaches that prayer is the communion of the intellect with God. Prayer is the ascent of the intellect to God. When the soul has been purified through the keeping of all commandments, it makes the intellect steadfast and able to receive the state needed for prayer. For what should we pray? Vagrios teaches is that we should pray for the purifications of our passions, for deliverance from ignorance and forgetfulness, from deliverance from all temptations, trial and dereliction. We pray to seek righteousness in the kingdom of God, virtue and spiritual knowledge. We pray for our purification and we pray for the purification of our neighbor. Should we pray with a checklist of what we expect from God? And should we be angry with God when our prayers are unanswered? When instead of blessings, our life is filled with sufferings? Evagrius warns, do not pray for the fulfillment of your wishes, for they may not be the will of God. But pray as you have been taught, saying, Thy will be done in me. Always entreat God in this way, that his will be done. For he desires what is good and profitable for you, whereas you do not always ask for this. In your prayer, seek only righteousness in the kingdom of God that is, virtue and spiritual knowledge, and everything else will be given to you. It is right to pray not only for your own purification, but for the purification of all your fellow men, and so to imitate the angels. I also want to point out in the Divine Liturgy in the Eastern Traditions, one of the main prayers is to pray that we will live a holy life this day, because tomorrow is another day. Vagrius teaches us, do not be distressed if you do not at once receive from God what you ask. He wishes to give you something better, to make you persevere in your prayer. For what is better than to enjoy the love of God and to be in communion with Him? Because there are no unanswered prayers. Prayer is its own answer. Vagrios closes this discourse on prayer by observing, If when praying no other joy can attract you, then truly you have found prayer. And now we'll discuss the sources we use for this video. These works by Vagrios the Solitary are found in Volume 1 of the Philokalia. We also recommend this book covering the Philokalia, which we quoted from. And we also have the unobstructed thumbnail picture of the monastery on Mount Athens. The YouTube description includes a link to our PowerPoint script that we uploaded to SlideShare and also our blog. Please support this channel by sharing this video with your friends and by clicking on the like and subscribe buttons and by clicking on the Amazon links to purchase any of the books we discussed which will earn us a very small affiliate commission. And please consider becoming a patron of our channel, plus we will host special discussion groups for our patrons. Plus, you can click on the Meetup or small M icon to participate in our online discussions where we practice our future YouTube scripts. And please click on the links for other videos that will broaden your knowledge and improve your soul.